Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the German Village Commission. It is July 6, 2021. This is the call of order for the German Village Commission. Uh, today is Tuesday, July 6, 2021. It is 4 or 6 p.m. You're back live uh, again in person on North Front Street. Uh, the next commission's monthly business meeting will be Tuesday, July 20, 2021. Uh, here at 111 North Front Street, second floor of 204. The next commission hearing will be 4 p.m. Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021 at 111 North Front, North Front Street, second floor, room 204. Go ahead and we'll swear in staff. We swear to tell the truth, the whole truth of the truth. Here, Jacqueline Newman, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Thank you, Jacqueline. Go ahead and have, have the introduction of commissioners present. We'll start down to right. Right, full. Present. Karen McCoy. Uh, Chair Andy Hartley. Charissa Durst. And Commissioner Steele and Commissioner uh, Ferial. Yep. Get to be re, uh, reappointed. And Commissioner Panzer has uh, left his position, moved to Arizona, and we're looking for a Senate member. Uh, we'll move on to the approval of minutes from Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. What's against? I have it. Um, we're headed to items of public forum. Jacqueline? No items of public forum. No public forum. We'll move on to the staff approvals, which begin on page five. Second to spin through those. Any recusals? Move to ratify the staff approval. Thank you. Are there any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? <clears throat> Senate motion passes. We'll move right along to the applications for this evening. Uh, the first application will be application number one, GV 21 07 036, 79 Thurman Avenue. Applicant for 79 Thurman. And if the applicants please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Right. You'll please state your name for the record. Uh, Robert Ryan with the law firm of Kephart Fisher. Jennifer Brown, Flat 51 co owner. Thank you very much. So, four additional variances are now being requested. The first include the below for the residential district use, the maneuvering, the parking space. And a minimum number of open spaces required. And no changes are proposed to what was previously approved for this application. So, staff recommendation is that the variance recommendation be uh, recommended by the commission as submitted. And that is based on the standards for alteration, as the application is generally consistent with the standards of alteration. Right. Is the applicant anything else to add? Just wanted to note, as Jacqueline mentioned, that the uh, uh, the use had been previously granted and then. 
during the course of working with staff, um, determine that some additional adjustments need to be made on the existing zoning, which is the purpose for what we're here today. So happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions come from the commission. Just remind the commission, you got to choke up on the mic a little bit. Uh, can you tell us which of the variances are due to the existing building and which ones are due to the proposed change of use? Bear with me for just one minute. Just the changes in uses? Is that well, the, which of the variances would be required even if you had no change of use? And which ones are required specifically because there is a change of use? Okay. Put another way, what are the existing non forming items? Is that yeah. The existing non conforming would be parking. Um, well, there's an adjustment that though, correct, uh, Jacqueline. Um, some new uses have been added. So there are two buildings there. There is the um, there's the northern building. Which is the smaller of the two buildings, two story building. And then there's the south building, which I believe is four stories, correct? Yes. Um, in the northern building on the second floor, there have been some, uh, the new uses would be photography, photography studio and then the event space. Um, office uses were pre previously permitted and are still permitted. And then I believe we've added some retail uses and commercial uses as well, permitted on the second floor of that building. Um, other changes. What would be the second floor of the south building? Um, medical uses, medical offices, office uses were not previously permitted, but would be permitted now. Previously, there were some time restrictions on some of the restaurant, on the retail and restaurant uses. Um, those have been eliminated. I believe there were also some changes made due to staff uh, recommendations due to uh, uh, the fact that those items aren't typically addressed in a variance application. I think one example of that was the use of the uh, um, any type of a outdoor uh, facility in the alleyway because the you know, commission doesn't have approval rights or the staff doesn't have approval rights over the use of private ways. I'm not sure I've entirely answered your question, but. Well, I, I guess just taking the first one, mm -hmm. the part two about residential district use, variance to allow you to something like asking is like what your building has right now, does it fit the R2F? Something. If, if there weren't any new things in the building. Would the current uses fall within? Right, that, um, the uses that were not that the application. I believe that's correct, yes. So that one is because of the proposed needs. Correct. Right. The minimum number of parking spaces is required to be 250. We were asking it to be reduced down to 120. Right. It was previously reduced to 127. Um, so there, there's an adjustment there. Asking for seven more adjustments, seven more spaces. That's correct. Which I believe is because that's what the existing parking is at the at the facility at the site. So correct. Sense. So it's just a it's, that's more or less cleaning up an existing. And then the other one about 22 parking spaces can be staff, is that also existing? There are there, yes, I believe that is the case. Um, but staff has asked us to add as a condition of that that they that any stack parking be um, only used by uh, the same tenant. Uh, so only two spaces. So I, my understanding is the stack parking has been there for it time, has right. Yeah, correct. Yes. Page five of the application. You 
the last one is the loading spaces. Is that interesting to me? No, they're factor. Do you know if the loading? I'm not sure about the loading spaces. You know, I don't believe that there's been any changes made to the existing parking there, so it's not part of it. I think again, that's another cleanup item. So maybe if I can summarize to make sure I understand, uh, uses are being fixed around. Previously, they have been reduced down to 127 for the remixing and choosing that needs to be reduced down to 120. Is basically what's happening. So there was probably some previously that required more that are now required less, et cetera. It looks like the event space is really the major driver of this part. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. I mean, are the hours such that the event space is not used traditionally when the other spaces are used? That's correct. The event space is evenings after office hours and weekends. It has, if I'm looking correctly, it has about a 65 space requirement. Mm -hmm. Any further questions from uh, the Motion to approve GB 21070367939. Correction. Recommend. Call the variance. Recommend the variance. Thank you. Any questions on the motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. I say of it. The motion and the advantages are recommended. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, moving ahead to agenda item number two, GB-21-07-037, 322 East Peck Street. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Your name is Morris Manry. Thank you. Michelle McFadden. Much. Right, I don't know. Listen, if you need to replace wood framing on the roof, so what? The firewood framing was replaced with new wood framing in 2011, having been previously approved by the Commission in 2010. So during this meeting, the commission asked if the slate roofing on piers and figures one and two of the application materials would remain. And the applicant has confirmed all slate roofing and masonry would remain, and that only the current wood frame and polycarbonate windows would be replaced, with the windows to be replaced with tempered glass. The applicant would like to clarify that in their prior 2010 applications, they relied on just some uh, other people's memories of what the greenhouse structure, the when the greenhouse structure had been built. But the applicant later searched resources at the public library in the German village meeting house and did not find any evidence that the greenhouse was built in that 1941 estimation. Uh, and now believes that the structure was either built or adapted in the 1970s. The staff notes that Sanborn map stating from 1951 support the applicant's estimation as the greenhouse does not appear on the sort of Sanborn maps. So staff does recommend approval as submitted and in that the word the application is. As proposed, is consistent with the standards for alteration. Anything to add? No. Any questions from the commission? There's no questions. Is there a motion? Motion to approve GB 21 327 East. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Stand. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving ahead to new applications. Uh, item number three, GB-21-07-038. 548 South 3rd Street. Applicant for 548 South 3rd Street. Kyle Nichols or Chelsea RP Limited. Right, put that one on the table.
All right, uh, we'll jump ahead to item number four, GV-21-07-039, 123 East Deschler. Looking for 123 East Deschler. Label that one and jump ahead to item number five, GV-21-07-052, 710714 South Fifth Street. And for this one, you both please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Great. Your name is, ma'am? Carolyn Gifford. Thank you. Steve Gifford. Thank you very much. Application that is in construction addition and garage. The applicant uh, does need to remove several trees in order to begin construction. So at the June business meeting, the commission asked that an arborist report be submitted regarding the condition of the trees and a plan for replacement and retaining the health of the existing trees to remain. The applicant has submitted an arborist report, which includes recommendations in regard to protecting those trees that are to remain. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications be submitted to staff. Uh, for review and prior to issuance of a certificate. And the basis of this recommendation is on the German Village Guidelines uh, philosophy, page 30, which discusses the overall character of the village and the trees. Good. Okay. Does Kathy have anything else to add? And if you do, please make sure you speak. You step up the microphone. No. I don't think. No. Uh, questions, comments from the commission? To read through the uh, report that was Just a question. Is the report basically stating or you're not proposing to replace any of the trees because these are all like sort of understory trees? That's correct. Right. There's plenty of the properties very overgrown. Like yeah. shade will remain. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, the three largest trees, the Catalpa trees, are 50, 60 feet tall, and those will remain. I'm okay with that, given the arborist free more. There's no other questions. Is there a motion? Motion to approve GB 2106055. Uh, uh, 710 714 Fifth Street. Second. Any questions on the motion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to item number six, GV 21 07 040, 181 Thurman Avenue. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Darren Barrett. This application is proposing to install a new automated gates at the rear of the property with access via the valley through the existing fence. The applicant that two poles will be dug with new posts and installed level with the existing privacy fence, and that the gates will be 12 feet in length and made for rock iron with the black outer edge. At the June business meeting, the commission asked staff to confirm whether gates made out in the right way would be permitted by the city, and the commission requested a plan sketch to better understand the location and context of the proposed gates. The commission asked that the mechanisms will be used for the committee to understand the visual impact. So staff has confirmed that the gates would not be permitted by right of way to swing outward into the public roadway. However, the applicant has submitted a site sketch and have updated the proposal to have the two gates swing inward from the the applicant notes on the site sketch that the post are three and a half inches by three and a half inches square of steel tubing, 
nine feet long with at least three feet to be in the ground. The gate post will have a black pattern finish coated to match the gate. And several gate style options have been submitted. So the staff analysis is that the gate style should be simple and compatible, such as the gate initially submitted, which was noted as the Madrid style. So staff does recommend approval of conditions, and that condition be that the gate be, the gate style be simple and compatible. Now that's based on the standards for alteration, specifically numbers three, nine, and also the standards for site improvement. But it be uh, there's one more standards for alteration. That's number twelve. Thank you, Jacqueline. Do you have anything else to add? No. Questions, comments from the commission. I agree with the staff. Madrid's code is appropriate. I advise this. I would just say that I agree that the trade seems the most appropriate is the simplest. Is it difficult that the gates are taller? No, I didn't notice that. Gate is six feet, is that correct? Yes, yes. Uh, one side is uh, is eight feet, I believe, and the other side um, is six feet. Yeah, just a rough. Yeah. In the, in the photo on the third page, yeah. I see the right side is eight foot, which we typically would not have a very tall fast of six, but would be the appropriate height. Question. So it's going to be the wrought iron gate in the wooden fence? Yeah, so the wooden fence is going to stay where it is, and the wrought iron gate is just filling the gap. They have animals and they want to just be able to close it for security. And as far as the style, are uh, you okay with the Madrid style? Is that yeah, that was the original one they went with, and then they decided to change it up, but we were, it was recommended that a more simple, so they're happy to go with what's accepted. Questions? This is on application GB 21 07 040 181 Cameron Avenue to approve the application as submitted. So, uh, with the clarification that the six foot high gate is appropriate because the existing wood fence will remain, which is six foot high. Gate. In the Madrid style, which is simplified style now. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I said. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Before you too far ahead, we'll jump back. Uh, is there an applicant here for 548 South Third Street? Or an applicant for a one, two, three East Deschler. Keep on uh, plowing forward. Item number seven GB 21 07 041 801 City Park Avenue. The applicant did contact staff that they were not going to be able to make this meeting, uh, so I just let them know if yeah, the commission has any questions or if we think that it might be denied, then the application will be continued. So uh, put that one tail, put back to it at the end of the year. We'll jump ahead to item number eight, GV-21-07-042-833 City Park. Again, for 833 City Park. First in person meeting is rough. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and add number nine, GV 21 07 043 922 South Third Street. What was the number again? Uh, I number nine, uh, 043 922 South Third Street. Yeah. <laughs> Please raise your right hand. Just to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Yes, sir. And please state your name for the record. Daniel May with Bella. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? This application was to go to install a one foot long stone well and plankings at the front yard. Uh, we'd like to replace the existing pine fence and gate with cedar timing for fencing and a gate in the same footprint and the same size. 
with the installing a vintage shadow box AC unit screen, a complete heating length, three feet in height with a three foot gate, maybe removing the existing deck and papers, and installing 385 square feet of thermal bluestone tile. The bluestone tile would cover all the square footage on the inside of the gate to the limestone steps, the AC unit, and the garage door. It also be installing six four foot limestone steps to create three eight foot steps up to the kitchen. So at the June business meeting, the commission requested product spec information regarding the thermal bluestone tile papers. The commission noted that covering the entire background and hardscape is a concern, but that the extensive hardscape is in existing condition. The commission asked if the bluestone papers are pervious and impervious. The applicant has provided um, an update about the bluestone papers, and I'll summarize um, basically saying that the, the bluestone papers are described as pervious. And so the staff recommendation is approval of any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to approval of the issuing staff certificate. That is based on the standards for alteration number 12 and the standards for site improvements letter A. Anything else to add to the applicant? And uh, as a piece of clarification, um, the thermal bluestone tile, I think the question was uh, regarding the nature of the thermal bluestone of the thermal mat. And from my research, correct me wrong, it's just that it's got texture to it, so it's not quite slippery. Correct, right. yes. Any other questions or, or comments from staff or from the commission? So is the stone being set on a concrete base or no sand? Is the and the material is real bluestone or is it said tile or is it of course thermal bluestone tile, okay. Pennsylvania thermal bluestone tile is and you're saying tile just means that as a tile. Just, Dave Ron's got tiles what they call it. Uh, okay. it's different sizes, one inch thick, yeah, consistent thickness, and it's it's on an aggregate bit. On the fence height looks like it's sitting on, on, a, on a concrete curb or curb of some sort. Is that fence six feet tall from the exterior sidewalk or is that six feet tall from the, from the sidewalk up? Okay, just want to yeah, clarify. I think the fence are, are six foot right. from the I think it's a five foot fence with a one foot bump up. Gotcha. Any foot floor that's referring to the stand, correct? I'm sorry. Where it says eight foot top board, that's referring to the span. I assume, yes. Basically, nothing's really going to be visible except for the fence. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the landscaping. Right. Not hearing any more questions. Motion to approve GV 2107 Street, 922 South Third Street. Second. Question on the motion. I would make a clarification of the six foot height of the top of the from the exterior three. All right. There's no, uh, no question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I stand. Thank you very much. Go ahead to item 10632 South 5th Street, GB 21 074044, 632 South 5th Street. Please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Anna Gustavskaya. And Ivo Sodero. Thank you very much. This application falls in the the applicant would like to replace the existing damaged concrete sidewalks on South Fifth and Near Streets with brick to remove the existing non-restored brick wall and metal fence around the property, build a natural stone retaining wall with limestone steps, replace the wood fencing on Near Street with new fencing and gate, and remodel the back pattern for the submitted plans, and add new landscaping throughout also for the submitted plans. So at the June business meeting, the commission asked for an arborist report to confirm the lifespan of the tree, noting that the silver maples can have limited lifespans. The arborist report was also requested so that the commission could better understand what would need to be done to prevent the proposed work from interfering with the tree or the root system over time, whether digging will be okay to do near the root system, 
And if anything can be done to prevent the tree from overtaking the hill's work and the right of way over time, such as a root barrier. The commission noted that a point of discussion at the meeting would be whether the informality of the stack stone would be okay to replace the non historic brick wall. And I also believe the applicant has some updated information and in trying to uh, obtain the progress report as well. Um, so overall, the staff recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to reviewing approval to issue a separate certificate with the condition that an artist or landscape architect is consulted to see tree to ensure the feasibility of the post work. That is based on the standards of site improvement letter pay. Thank you, Jacqueline. And the applicants will turn it over to you for any, any additional information you have. And please speak into the microphone. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Right. Okay. So we had an arborist coming by today, and I forwarded his assessment to Jacqueline's email. So basically, the tree is in perfect health and has a long lifespan if nothing happens drastic. Uh, however, uh, he also mentioned that the extent of the construction we want to do, like the sidewalk and the retaining wall, will most uh, likely damage the root system of the tree. So it's not possible to assess if you know the tree will be damaged beyond repair or not. So it may survive or may not. <laughs> uh, so this is the, the last information we have. Provide recommendations on how to treat the roots, etc. Yes, he said that we could treat the roots, uh, improve the soil, do aeration. However, uh, like on usual construction site, they would require much larger space around the tree to be knocked, not digged into. But we don't have the space, so to do the new retaining wall, we have to come quite close to the tree. He also offered uh, that during the construction, then the retained wall comes down, he would come out and kind of point out which roots would be better not to cut or whatever. But again, he cannot guarantee that the tree will not be damaged too badly. I'm of the opinion wrong that converting the concrete sidewalk to brick, I think, would help the tree in general. Of surface that get more mm -hmm. water and whatnot down the roots. I think it's the retaining wall is the like, most risky thing. Yeah, I mean, I the the bulk of the root system should be contained right now within the retaining wall because of the height of the retaining wall and the fact that they're you know it's basically paved all the way to the street. Uh, there are things that can be done, uh, you know, they, if they very carefully pull that away. The other con concern, there's two things that you really don't want to do. You don't want to impact what's called structural roots, which occur a certain distance from the trunk. Um, and then the other thing is you don't, you don't want to fill on the tree either. So I have a little bit of concern with the fact that the tree is going to be impacted by the construction of the wall, and then you're also showing a lot of landscape around that tree that's not just ground cover. You have taxes and other things that are going to require excavation. And I almost wonder if it's even possible to plant those under that tree because you're mm -hmm. going to get into a lot of tree roots. So I really feel like for the best survival of that tree that you need to modify that landscape plan yeah. as well. And it really should just be a ground cover that's under it. Mm -hmm. That just the area uh, on page three. Um, it's kind of a dash box. Uh, so they don't set the area you're most concerned about there. Yeah, there was, there was kind of a brick edging there. I would say yes, if you kind of stayed within within that zone and kept any kind of, I mean, you're basically going to know when you start to excavate if you're hitting a ton of roots and mm -hmm. silver maples are surface rooting trees. Mm -hmm. That's why they break up all the, you know, concrete paving, and things like that. So I think it, that part will be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's probably a way to build that wall back 
you just have to um, without damaging that those existing tree roads. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. And if you do have to cut roots, you have to do clean cuts and mm -hmm. you don't want to leave those roots exposed for long. Yeah. So there's lots of things that can be done. Karen, if you look at the detail on page seven, the wall shows limestone and trees tunnel behind it. That may be getting the system. Seven here. So yeah. I can't think about it. Yeah, which is which is typical. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the pictures show that the, the roots are. Yeah, it's just. Concrete. Yeah. <laughs> They're there. They're there. <laughs> uh, can I also check with you one more idea? So I asked this arborist what he would do if it were his property and his tree. And he wanted to do the construction, so he said that he would remove the tree, he would level the front yard down to the street level, as like all other houses on the street, and he would plant a new, more appropriate tree, because silver maples, they are almost nuisance trees in his view, because they're not appropriate to plant near sidewalks. So he would plant a different tree <laughs> and do the construction and would not have retaining wall at all. So. I wanted, we wanted to check if maybe this solution would be preferable, you know, and from the point of view of the neighborhood, because we would plant several trees that would be more appropriate in the long term. So I'm not saying it's our preferred solution, but just an idea. Certainly helpful. Make sure the sidewalks are keeping the future, right? So typically when a large Shade tree is taken out and one should whatever it is back is will become a large shade tree as mm -hmm. opposed to something more metal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's check. Yeah. 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 That's really I'm actually surprised. Um, did, do you have a written? Do you have a written? Uh, so he sent me an email. Which I forwarded to Jacqueline because the, he consulted with the person who does specific risk assessment for the trees and takes care of the trees during construction projects. And this was the feedback he got that the tree will get damaged. <clears throat> but I mean, my question to the commission is if we know that the tree that, that has caused problems to the sidewalk and continue to cause problems to the sidewalk. With the applicant knowing that their landscaping would likely cause damage to the tree, is something we want to entertain at the time. Of, does it make sense to just replace the tree with a more appropriate tree and just take it off the table again? I I hate to take down mature trees, but I also know that um, I mean silver maples are weak wooded trees. And they're subject to wind damage and all ice damage, all sorts of things. Um, so if it, you know, really in that small space, you would only put one tree back, you know, a good shade tree back, and, and you know, maybe something like an oak that's going to be more deep rooted. This tenacious tree has been there for so long. It has. <laughs> We we love the tree. Yeah. It was actually the reason we bought this particular house. So it's breaking my heart. Mm -hmm. Of course. And so advocating saying you should take it down, just hit on the table. Yeah. It's on the table, it's something to talk about. And mm -hmm. and if through the course of construction the tree does become damaged by uh, years down the road, you start seeing the damage. Um we want to be on record that. You want a tree to go back, mm -hmm. and then if the tree that is not decaying from, from natural causes, it will be, be decaying because of the work that was done. Um, mm -hmm. so that's always I want to make sure that's on the record. Yeah, for real day. Mm -hmm. was... Yeah, I had four silver makers in my yard, and also ten years ago, then one they all came down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one is pretty high. It's about four stories high already, and I think the lifespan of them is not very long, at least based on internet research, <laughs> and this has been there forever. So uh, we really do, uh, don't have like 
we are not certain what we wanted to do. So I really want to rely on you guys to say to us, like, what would you recommend? Because well, we can mm -hmm. the house because of the tree. So if you want to move forward, you try to discard your tree and you have everybody to support you. Mm -hmm. But if you then subsequently discover that the tree did get damaged and it's dying, that you recognize that if you have to take it down, you will put back another large shade tree. Mm -hmm. Not just a cute little ornamental tree. So like another piece of information is that the retaining wall yeah. Is the second most expensive item on the project. It's like $15,000. So taking down the tree, leveling everything and putting a big new tree, it's actually cheaper than the redoing retaining wall. So, you know, if down the road, the tree starts to die, we will have to do all that all over again. <laughs> We, we don't like putting, uh, we don't like, like putting the, the wrought iron fence on top of brick walls. It's not something appropriate for the neighborhood. They're everywhere, but it's not a historical thing. Um, we don't encourage putting up retaining walls just to have a raised yard. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that I'm not sure what your foundation is like there or what would happen if you were to take that sort of the raised area away, what the condition would be. Uh, I think that would be. More of a continuation of the application if you want to kind of do some mm -hmm. research down that path. You know, like personally, I would not be against the idea of bringing that back down to grade. Mm -hmm. so I would not be against taking a tree that's problematic, um, putting a more appropriate tree of the shade variety back in its place. That's my opinion. I think that the rest of the commission have to tie down that. Well, I also think. I mean, the idea of taking that grade down also affects the adjacent homeowner as well. So it's something I think would have to be investigated. Mm -hmm. That would happen. And it's not possible to just repair. So I'll carry the application as is. So, the caveat, you know, there may be problems that come back road. All right. Yeah. In which case, I've got some questions. Does anybody propose anything in the application as is with that understanding? Mm hmm. Okay. Here the pushbacks. The applicants, we can put on as is. Yes, yes, this would be, yeah. And mm -hmm. if you'd like to, uh, if you've already decided that you want to pursue taking it all out, you can come back and apply again. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I just wanted to hear, like, because you do it all the time, wanted to hear your opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments during motion? Just as a question, are we going to do that? They, uh, can we make the replacement of the tree to standards and condition of approval? So, I think if it's on the record, then they go, the tree needs to come down for some reason. They mm -hmm. want to get back to the record. Mm -hmm. So, then I will motion to approve GB2107044632 South 5th Street with the condition that if the tree is damaged beyond repair, or is dies later because of the work that it will be replaced with an appropriate tree to be reviewed by the commission. Second. Any question the application? Take the vote. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Yes. I said. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, quick look back. We have to here for 548 South Third Street. One, two, three, East Eschler. Eight, three, three, City Park. All right, keep going forward. Uh, I believe we are on item number 11, GB-21-07-045-306 East Beck Street. All right, on the record show, the applicant is still on the record at this morning early. Jacqueline? 
This application is also involved with the landscaping. The applicant would like to replace the existing pinewood fencing and gate with new matching pinewood fencing and gate within that same footprint. They'd be installing three 10 foot and three six foot limestone steps to replace existing mortar filled brick steps at the entry and side patio within the same footprint. They would be relaying the existing brick sidewalk using gravel base. Installing a 1,403 square foot of bell press, 760 clay burn pavers, and 92 square feet of thermal bluestone tile with a permeable gravel base and gravel screen to be used in all joints. They would be installing 167 feet of six inch cut limestone wall with tile edging and landscape border. Installing eight inch cut limestone, 26 feet by one foot tall walls as planter boxes. They'd also be installing a 71 gallon, 48 2 gallon, 9 3 gallon, 3 5 gallon, 4 7 gallon, and 1 15 gallon shrubs, and a custom hardwood mulch and bringing in topsoil. Uh, so the extensive hardscape is predominantly in existing condition, and the applicant is proposing a permeable material to replace the brick. So at the June business meeting, the commission asked for product spec information regarding the thermal booster and tile. Uh, noting that much of the area is possible should be permeable as the proposal would still be covering the yard most of the yard hardscape. And that has provided that information about the boost and tile. Uh, and so staff recommends approval of any clarifications be submitted to staff prior to the issuing some certificate. And that is based on the standards of alteration number 12 and the standards of for site improvements letter A. All right. Anything else to add? Yes, sir. Questions, comments from the commission? I'm just checking the, the limestone edging painting wall is only on the inside. It's not associated with the pine fence at all. No, yeah, I'm just starting on the perimeter of the patio. Inside the fence. Correct, yes. And you got clarification six foot tall. That's in. Is the new gate also fine with fencing? The new gate, the front gate? Yeah, just Which the gate? gate that existing gate, or is that uh, there's a gate up front that's being repurposed, moved back a foot and reused. There's a back gate that's pine or cedar fencing. Did I answer the question? So the, so the gate is up against the garage existing? Correct. Page four shows that gate. The footprint of almost the entire project stays the same. Just putting new materials, you know. Defense basically will look like the old fence. It'll be exactly like the old fence, but new. Motion to approve GB 21070453060. Second. Any questions on the motion? So, all those in favor? Aye. Those against? I have the motion passes. Thank you very much. We're going to item 12, GB 21 07 728720 City Park. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. It's Nathan Sampson. This application is regarding exterior alterations. The applicant would like to replace non historic wood siding on dormers at the primary or west elevation with new wood six inch dust should lack uh, true exterior, otherwise known as oral siding. After previously approved siding as a rear of the home. Yeah, I think guys replace the non-historic brick boards, corner boards, and window trim boards with five fourth inch uh, form trim boards. The new window trim that mentions some detailing will match the existing. The yeah, applicant would also like to replace the non-historic two over two double hung windows at the northwest and south elevations with new two over two insulated pod windows uh, with a selection to be from the approved windows list. That would be the Marvin Ultimate G2 window. Um, the finish would be ebony. And that would match the previously approved window finish at the rear of the hall. 
So at the June business meeting, the commission asked that the applicant double check that the brick mold is the correct uh, simple square brick mold, noting that this brick mold type does not always show up in the market catalog. Uh, so the staff recommendation is that the siding reveal appears a little bit wide in proportion to the dormers. So staff does recommend approval um, with the condition that the siding reveal and the dormers be reduced. And the basis for that recommendation is the standards for alterations, number nine and 12. Anything else to add? Um, I don't think so. The the one clarification I think in the agenda was just to make sure that everybody understood that the uh, corner boards adjacent to the proposed siding is a five quarter board, and I think we cleared that up just to make sure that those are proud of the siding that's proposed to be installed. Um, we did uh, specify the square brick mold um, for the windows that will be replaced in the masonry walls. Um, and I think that was it for clarifications. I think that what uh, Jack and Mr. Barry had there was uh, on the dormer sightings. Mm -hmm. It's a can come before. Right now, it's uh, according to page uh, eight of the application. It's currently one by four wood V groove. The application is currently showing one by six coral. Touch lap. You had chose, if I remember correctly, you chose six inch, but they didn't make a one by four in the boral uh, lap side. Correct. It's it's to match the siding uh, previously proposed and approved and installed in the back of the house. Um, that siding, I mean, the exposure um, on that siding is five inches. Look at the last page. Looks like the only thing that comes in a one by four in the bowl collection is the nickel gap. Which yeah, correct. So the our clients are just going. We're proposing that just um, for the consistency for the siding on the primary residence. Is our The where the wood siding is, yeah, that's a, an addition. Yeah, yeah. We know the age of the dormers and what they Okay. Then it is appropriate and okay to match. I think. Okay. That's okay. The question, just for applicants and maybe else's knowledge, is. If it's a historic feature of a historic structure, we want to maintain as much historic as possible. Um, trying to use an addition to, to drive the choices of historic structure. Yep. 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 Motion to approve GB 210708 720 Park Ave. Second. Is there any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes? Aye. Seven. Thank you very much. See item 13GV 21-07-046. Alpha and the Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Do. And please use your name to record. Brian Thomas. Sir. Jacqueline. This application is regarding exterior alterations. So the applicant wants to construct a new single story covered side porch at the east elevation of the residence. The application was previously reviewed conceptually at the May GC hearing of this year. And the commission feedback concluded uh, the following that typically for a porch, this this pulled from the public right of way, the porch or that screen from the porch is not approved. Um, even screening creates a solidity to mass changing the lightness of the porch. Uh, and uh, the other information was to check that the gutter will not overhang over the window and to recommend below 55% lot coverage. 
and recommend that Smitty build a part architecture and variances at the same time, which you have the mechanism done. Uh, so the location of the porch will make it fully visible from the right of way, uh, and this will alter the design and the appearance of the compact residence and facing the primary elevation. So staff does recommend installing something akin to a pergola or similar to create a shaded area without altering the design of the building as seen from the public right of way. And that is based on the standards for alterations, numbers 1, 3, 10, and 12. Staff, do you have anything else to add? All right, questions, comments from the commission? Do we have any record of, of the parts coding the stucco that's on there when it was added? Out of curiosity. Anybody? No, Apple can't work. I, I, I don't have that information. We're not. Did anybody think of this? Well, I don't know that the sandboards say it. That kind of thing. Just curious. It's 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 a brick it's a brick structure. There is a addition to the back of it that's a wood frame structure. Which in the picture that shot from the back side you can kind of see. Sorry, that's okay. I mean, I'm gonna be the independent system of the guidance program. Heard staff see compelling reason to. Different from what the guy said. That's not. When we uh, came for our conceptual, none of that was brought up. And in uh, in the letter provided to us, none of that was brought up. The only issue that was brought up during our conceptual was uh, with regards to the zoning variance requests of lot coverage to take it back down to get it uh, below fifty five percent because it. Currently is over the 50% requirement already. So really the only difference in what we're presenting now than what we presented at conceptual was, is it slightly smaller in order to accomplish that? It's not a screen porch. It is not. It's an open porch. Yeah, we asked the question at conceptual whether a screen porch would be considered and basically got a round of no's. So, yeah, we, again, we didn't. It was a simply a question from the owner. You know, they, they want something covered. They said, ideally, they'd like it to be screened, but they understood if it couldn't be. And again, the, the pictures they uh, submitted are uh, current. One of them is a current thing on. Uh, I can actually. It's on uh, third, which was done within the last 10 years, um, is almost identical. It's a side porch seen from the street, very little landscape screening. It is uh, 689 South 3rd Street. Uh, the other examples that they provided, like basically I asked them, what do you want? You know, they went around the neighborhood and took pictures. The other uh, examples they provided I, were uh, 796 South 3rd, which could be historic. It probably isn't. It's because it's a, it's a, it looks too nice and it's got a concrete base to it. So it seems like it would be a modern construction. And then the, the other one, it, it looks like it might be historic, but how it's currently clad doesn't look historic at all. Uh, the one on Whittier. That one's got some curtains, which I think they were, they liked because of that, but we didn't pursue that option. One, one part I got having with it is uh, on page seven, eight. Of the drawing. Showing a continuous two by 10 ledger um, fastened to the, to the existing masonry. Um, anytime we try to put, put, put in porches or, or things, tying into the existing structure is always Right. Dicey, in my opinion. Is there a way to have this? You have columns along the face of the 
sure. potentially the problem that I would run into, the, I guess it wouldn't be along the face. It would probably have to be a little bit off because typically it's a full base when I'm going to run into some kind of debris trying to get a column in there. I mean, we have in the past lagged into um, those, you know, old masonry structures. It's a rubble stone foundation um, where we're hitting probably would be brick because of how the it's built. Um, we can use epoxy anchors as well, you know, along with the wedge so that it's not relying on a, a wedge connection. Once the epoxy sets up, it, it'll hold. My engineer didn't have any problem with it. Um, but, but yeah, you could probably run just like we're doing the column line, uh, which is the outside line. We've got three piers there. We could potentially do three piers that are maybe like two feet off of the building and not bring those up through the structure. So they, they, they wouldn't have to be seen in the elevations. They would exist only below that you could potentially just cantilever, build it basically as a separate structure, but I still, the roof, I can't do that really. The, the, like the, the floor structure that the roof, I don't know how you would accomplish that without drastically changing the look of it. Cause I can't cantilever back that far off of the columns we have now. The, the, the two pieces, two reasons why I have a little trouble with suspending it off the uh, missing structure. One, when you drill the anchors in the brick, you're basically damaging the brick that's there. Mm -hmm. If this ever comes off, one of the, the tenets of preservation is you want to try to do it in such a way that you're not going to damage the, the, the fabric. Uh, so with this being part, it's going to be very hard to try to find more if you want to. Uh, so you could cut off the parching. That's I mean, what, the end, what happens? Um, the other piece is a lot of these double white brick walls, I mean, they, they bulge on their own as they are. They're, they're starting to separate over time and putting the weight of some additional structure against it just gives me pause. Which I guess I would agree if it's like a two story addition, but being an open porch, it has pretty minimal load. Um, like that's acting on it and it's open. So it's not getting any real shear or anything. Cause it, you know, it's not going to catch the wind. You know, it does, you've got a little bit of uplift, but that's not going to really affect like what you're talking about where you would potentially be pulling it out. You know, that's, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple structure, I guess, as it exists. Yeah, the, the, the concern I had, I guess, and I'm, I apologize. I don't know. because I'm stuck here with you guys. <laughs> um, but the, the the cards could have, you know, I mean, we're all assuming it's not. I would think it went on when the addition was right. done. And so my concern is that we have to install this in such a way that we not lose. So so we're not concerned about damaging the parge coating, but you're concerned about damaging the brick below it. Well, I'm also concerned about then when, if it's working correctly, parge coat is going to come back. Parge coat. There, there, there's a there's kind of a can of worms and stuff that we're going to Sure. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's, you're talking conceptually. If these people leave and somebody comes in and wants to change what's what's been done, um, I mean, I, like I said, I can. Trying to figure out on the structure. The, the, because the only way I, I'd have to try to push it higher to, to get to not attach the roof line, because I'd have to basically create a beam line that runs across that to catch the roof where it attaches. And then my attachment would simply consist of some kind of a counter flashing. You know what I mean? Would be the only damage, but I, I don't know how you would seal it without it, it, doing that. Yeah. Sure, because are you, are you planning to counter flash? Step counter flash. Or does it need it's it's a it's a rubber roof, so it it would have to turn up. You know, probably minimally, um, and, uh, and then have a turn. It'll have like a termination bar. Turn bar. Yeah, I mean, so you'd see a little bit of the black. And we could we could install a counter flashing similar. I don't know off the top of my. Well, that's the thing is it probably isn't done like that. You could cut it into the parching potentially and just caulk it like it doesn't. It just has to be waterproof. Um, 
it doesn't have, it's not going to be a true step flash thing through the masonry and all that. Um, I, I, that wouldn't be the intention. Um, you know, it, if we don't want to see the rubber roof go up, like we could introduce some kind of a, an aluminum on, let me look at what the, Fresh in my mind to see. I don't think I have any. There, there's a picture on page 15 that shows an example of what happens. I'm just trying to figure out what we have. Yeah. So I, I have a, like I have a chimney. The, the parging doesn't have any flashing really. It's got an, like just a drip. So I have a little bit of chimney step flashing up on a brick chimney, which appears it's not. Not copper or anything, so I guess I could just match what that is if we want to do a, but it would probably be a straight flashing and not a step flashing. It's it. It's going to be at such a low elevation that if we start stepping it, it's going to become a lot more visible because I'm going to have to follow coursing yeah. than if than if we just allow it to to tack to the wall in the parging. Well, it's, I, it's just slopes for drainage. Yeah. It's going to be done with the insulation. That's, I mean, it's not so. But I, I, you know, I guess we hadn't necessarily worked out that detail. We're open to whatever. Um, but I wouldn't anticipate that we'd be doing true counter flashing into the brick coursing, like cutting into the mortar joints. I would think that you're doing some kind of a more of a termination bar type of flashing piece where. Again, you're just going to kind of tack, tack it there. Correct. Yeah, I do have some windows up there, but I don't know that we're going to come in that close to them. So I don't think that they're in play. Jackson, did you reference the section in the report? I have the standards reference. I don't have the guidelines referenced. The standards reference being the Department of Interior standards. No, no standards. Are others having any heartburn about attaching this? I'm not saying I'm up. Well, I mean, we've had similar applications in the past of being denied, and they ended up doing a burglar, you know, that was a way of us. So, so um, I guess on, on our end, the, like, the, none of that was brought up in conceptual. Like, basically, in conceptual, we were told we were good as we stood it if we made it smaller. Is what we did. Right, we're just talking about casting. Yeah. Essentially, we well, have no casting information whatsoever. It's just simply wheeled in. Right, right. But I guess a pergola versus that standing away versus a covered porch are two totally different things. Pergola is an open roof, so it doesn't provide you with weather. Like if it's raining out, obviously, if it's coming hard, you're probably not out there. But if it's raining, you can still be on a porch, but you can't be under a pergola. The fastening, like I said, I at the at the base I can at the base I can create the the non-fastening. You know, again, it's, it's just I just can't do it right at the foundation. But uh, again, I the only the only thing I can think of to do it at the roof level is I'd have to put a beam in there to carry the load where the structure hits the and somehow rely on getting that load back down to the ground where I'm not immediately at the foundation. So, um, the, uh, flashing detail, like this, it's going to be a caulking type of detail, not a heavy fastening detail then. I think the only problem we have right now is a fasten to the structure, the flashing that you do just to. A, a, perg a pergola, I guess, is not a covered. Okay. Gazebo. Yeah. 
me, it could be up against structure. I have to waterproof the roof is my issue. So I can structurally make that, but I can't. That conversation we haven't had because it did not come up, but I, I mean, I would say they want to walk out onto their porch. So I don't know that I can, it's also going to be impossible for me to build a structure that's that close and be able to finish it. You know what I mean? Like if I'm going to put it that close to the building, and say I create a, I guess feasibly I could create a half inch gap, but I can't actually finish that because I can't paint it. I can't, you know, like say, yeah. So I'm going to have to pull it. That you're going to have to pull it back a distance that it can be maintained, and then that's you know, providing a separation that they weren't looking for. I could cut away the parging where it's concealed in the roof is what I was saying. Correct. You know what I mean? Find, find where the mortar joints are for the ledger that's up there. Um, and, you know, it, it's a six inch ledger. So I'll, I'll have a horizontal mortar joint somewhere. So. I think we get more than this. But I would say, I, I don't think I can do that at the foundation level. Well, if you look at the picture, like there's also like these weird bump outs on the foundation level that like a stringer is probably or a ledger is probably not going straight. It's probably bumping around. So that in that case, I think I would have to pull it backwards. Thank you. Is my best option. Okay. Fortunately, we're rather short staffed. That's okay. Commission right now, so we got we got two to two would be. Yeah, and so we're on the floor. I'm having trouble. Oh, I'm trying to. Okay. This kind of a guidance. Addition should be sent back, and then we're assuming this is considered an addition. Or to consider an addition. I think there's a section on portions. In, in essence, it is a type of addition. Well, then it's the, the section of porches is that all existing porches or porches of stoops are the existing porches, right? So, yeah, you read alterations to existing structures. Additions. Yeah. additions should be set well back from the principal facade or storage structure, typically in excess of halfway. Additions should not substantially alter the existing streetscape, street view from any elevation. If the addition is visible from other public right of ways, including alleys, the impact of the addition should be considered those views as well. The addition should not obscure or hide the original structure of the view. That's where I'm having trouble and trying to figure out if this if this does or does not obscure. And, and during the the, the the central reviews, the this porch was a lot closer to the front and it was moved back. And we moved it back to to mitigate the issue. It, it probably moved back a couple feet from where it initially was. Part of it also was getting it clear of the window. That because that was a, a point of contention that was brought up to, to push it back. So in, in accommodating that, the size actually fixed itself and got small smaller by by pushing back. Yeah. So that's kind of the notes that were there. Yep. Um, we did mention that not screening it because being visible right away, screening it the appropriate. So I think we took the spirit of the guidelines to account there. Mm -hmm. Try to not make this be reading as an addition and you can read it or as a porch, which I think has a nuance to it. Yeah, I think that we can get away with it. So 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 restate for me how we're gonna attach to the basement at the top. You were saying so at the top, I have a two by six, or that that's basically got to be lagged into the wall. So what I'm saying, I can remove, I can figure out where that two by six goes and remove the parging there, like without affecting the view. Ultimately, like if it got pulled off, 
the parging would probably be damaged by what we're doing anyways. So the, the parging would, I guess, come into play anyways. So if it's removed and we can tack into the mortar joints instead of tacking into the brick, then I, that's what I, I was offering. Because there's no way that I can't find the mortar joints because of you know brick coursing and whatnot based on the size of the ledger. And I mean, if, if it doesn't work out with my spacing exactly right, I'll just add more anchors into the into the mortar joints than are required by what the engineer specified. Not going to try to make <laughs> I move on application GB 21 57 046 31 East Coppice Street to approve the application as submitted. The clarification is that the parking will be removed first to allow the uh, header board to be fastened directly into water joints and not the brick itself. And uh, the applicant has already pulled the porch beyond the window so that it's set back from the front facade. And the applicant has also stated that the porch will not be screened, therefore maintaining its open set of new historic structure. Especially the, the base of that have the type of structure. Be the same principle. Right. And because we're allowing the structure to be fastened to more at the top, the base would therefore not be fastened to the historic materials. Second. Second. <laughs> Any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Uh, <laughs> here we go. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Staying. 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 One abstention. <laughs> Three eyes, one abstention. Thanks for bearing with it. That's okay. Motion passes. And then that was from Alpha. We also have to have a, a motion for Bravo to recommend the various instances. What was going to be? It's GB 21 07 046 Bravo. The variances are basically our side yards are like being reduced because the porch is occupying it. The area that we're allowed to cover, we're already over. Um, so we're gonna be continue to be over. So that's uh, not changing the, uh, I guess we're already violating it. So we're just gonna continue to do it up to that 55%. And then the uh, building itself does not sit back from the street already uh, is the is the third one. So no matter what we we did, we'd I think we'd have to be 10 feet back, we'd be almost, Back in the backyard past the building, if we did it that way. We move on application GB 21 07 046 31 East B 31 East Coffee Street to recommend the zoning variances as submitted, uh, specifically 3332.21 front yard setback requirement to be reduced from 10 feet to 0 feet, but that is an existing condition. 3332. 0.25 side yard requirement uh, to be reduced from a uh, requirement of 9.37 feet down to 5.4 feet to accommodate the new construction. And 3332.18D to allow incre uh, increase of the maximum built area to be over 50%, noting that the existing building is already at 50.3% and with the addition of the side porch, it will be at 54.6%. Um, the applicant has reduced it to be under the 55% maximum previously stated. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Sessions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, real quick, we'll go back to the you passed up. Is there an applicant here for 548 South Third Street? 123 East Keschler? 833 City Park? 
you want to head um, item 14 GV 21 07 047 10 15 Digger Street. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Anthony Hudson. Stephanie Wickham. Joseph Wickham. Thank you very much. Stephanie is for construction as well as demolition. The proposed search includes removing the existing not contributing rear additions and constructing a new two story addition with a combination of oral and fiery board siding for the cement materials and installing a stink. Uh, concrete terrace at the rear yard. So the application was previously reviewed conceptually uh, at two different times, and the commission feedback from the most recent, the June 2021 GBC hearing, included that the application is much closer to being titled the guidelines, that the contemporary flatwood awnings may be a possibility. The awning over the door uh, appeared to be bulky or too wide, and noting that they should not trail into the masonry and be above the transom. The commission noted that the fabric awning may be lighter and not require a supportive structure, that the sides of the covering should be kept open, and that the proposed windows at the west elevation are off the proportion and will need to respect the massing. A single pane window show up in perspective looks more proportionate for the second story window on elevation. And the applicant, uh, the commission noted that the applicant needs to solve the roof overhang and may need to use fireproofing materials. And recommending getting BCA or BCS communication and writing regarding that. And the commission recommended that they would need to see the LP siding to in order to evaluate that siding. The LP siding should have a smooth finish and avoid any foam with grain. And rotating the gable roof should help. Uh, so staff analysis is that the addition that's currently proposed does not yet defer out to the sort building, and that it should be narrower rather than cover and extrude from the side of the sort building. But the demonstration as proposed does contrast greatly from the historic structure and stands out from the street view that the concrete deck is a suburban feature that's out of character with the village. So staff recommends that the addition be recessed where it means that historic structure rather than extrude from and come the side of that historic structure, that the addition demonstration be similar in size and configuration to that of the historic structure, and that the any hardscape materials be permeable as opposed to impermeable, such as the concrete deck. So the basis for the staff recommendations are the standards for new construction, letters D, E, and M, and also the German village guidelines on page 93 that addresses additions and has a recommendation uh, number specific to number four, and as well as connectors on pages 94. Sorry, I seem to have messed up my tablet. I was just checking Joe with him. I finally did when she's messing with this one. The anything else to add? Uh, yeah, do I have to push this? The light's on, you're good. I'm just kind of talking to it. Okay. Um, during our, the last uh, business meeting, none of these those items were brought up during the review. Uh, when we did our um, the previous review, the cursory review, was nothing but compliments from the board member and no other items were brought to our attention. That was problematic. I'm, this is all new to us. Those comments came from city staff, not the commission ourselves. So it's the first time we're seeing them as well. Okay. Questions, comments from the commission? Yeah. 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 I do want to make a note for the commissioners the, the new application pages start on page 65. Previous application pages prior to I'd like to add a couple of other things. So sure. we did also we addressed the issue with the setbacks from our previous uh, review as far as um, not creating any kind of uh, variance. Uh, there was a originally, I think, when we proposed, we were 
within the three foot setback that was that was addressed in the from the last meeting. Um, we also addressed the side awning. Uh, there was a um, concern about it being too wide. Uh, we narrowed it down. Once again, during that last meeting, it was we were complimented on how we had addressed those those items. You can see it in that. Uh, I guess if you go back to page it's page sixty eight because of the elevation of the roof. Yeah. Page yeah, so if you see in that top elevation, uh, originally that was uh, wider to cover the uh, lower step. We reduced that to cover the existing stoop that is there. So for the commission members here, even though we are, um, staff comments, um, contemporary flat roof on it, maybe possibly on it, but it's appeared too bulky. Um, that what they've shown there, as, as was stated, is smaller than was there originally. Flip back to page. Page 62 of your application, you'll see the original awning. That's what it was. It's got kind of smaller to match the size of the door. As we discussed last meeting, Everdyne <clears throat> uh, was also talked about. And if this fabric the size should be kept open, and we had a conversation about open size versus closed size. Looking at the current application here, as is that that is an open size. Open size. Yes. I think it's visually it doesn't read. It's the same. The windows the west elevation. We talked about those windows uh, last time around. Specifically, the lower window. Um, we discussed that being portion wise, I believe it's a stairwell or a restroom area. That is a restroom, restroom area. Uh, originally, it was a it was a taller, and the uh, the one perspective view had shown it where it hadn't been changed. Yep. We changed it back to that, so we addressed that as well. Special comments were either it should be double honey, should be more purpose size, maybe a single window should be. Kind of smaller in scale. I think we hit what we talked about. Upper window. We discussed. Anyway, with the window heights we talked about, go to the south elevation and bottom page. <laughs> identifying windows across the elevation it should be same heights, whatnot. Differentiation between the addition versus the original structure. That would be part of the conversation. Uh, from right in front of that single upper window conversation. Yes, both, both of you to consider appropriateness of that. Give it perspective. Things came into the end of conversations. How far back that is from mm -hmm. the perspective versus flat elevations. Yeah, if you look at this the last page. 
looks pretty. It looks scalable. So it's the it's the way the first floor edition engages that uh, existing wall by lapping it in that bathroom area that we're talking about. Is that something? Doesn't seem like something we typically like to see. On page sixty six. So what staff did mention is something that we would typically have comment on. I don't remember it being discussed in our conceptual review, but that corner on the south, on the south side where the original structure meets the addition, mm -hmm. we talked about on the north side, stepping it back so you have that deviation between the initial plane of building versus the new plane of building. Um, but typically having that new addition Oh, proud of the rear elevation. Um, we typically have some kind of return and reveal some kind of separation there. Um, the only thing would pick that one up is that something architecture that can be addressed. So it's not, you don't have the original corner being wrapped by the new addition. Can we pull that back at all? Or is that something that's architecturally forced to be there? Yeah, I'm not sure how we would accommodate um, a little offset there and still try to get the width we're, we're trying to get with the uh, the powder room and more more than anything the the uh, kitchen that kitchen coming down on the south side. Um, I know we've had these discussions before, um, and I don't want to go back where we were before, but other additions just down the street from them have similar similar side um, side bump outs and we are within you know our our building setbacks and you know it's 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 tough with the, a lot that's 29 point something feet wide um, and you're creating this uh, you basically have a shotgun shotgun house And once again, it wasn't something that was brought to our attention again. I understand. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it in pure elevation, the north and south elevation is just challenging, but you'll never see that in pure elevation. Correct. The, the, Question was it brought up? Is the Hardy just up or typically you like our Well, we had what we had addressed. It's the, it's the Hardy is just the quarter inch, the, uh, the four by eight sheets, and then we're using bat, the uh, uh, boral batten scripts. Historically, we could come across boral doesn't make sheet good, so yeah, Hardy does. They don't have to have like Hardy smooth sheets with the boral, right? In the board stress. Correct. Thank you. Then going down the rest of the staff comments, um, overhang and fireproofing, that was addressed, I believe, and set that door With the, all back. Correct. Uh, and then the comment about getting BZ and BZS communication right, I think that's also part of that north wall. So, I'll spring. Oh. One of the thinking about the addition guidelines that we're just looking at, right? And so, from from the from the front, I think it's um, significantly altering the appearance of the building. It it perspective. Is actually helpful. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I, I can't um, um, try to go to the step. 
the, the one comment on there about the about the hardscape materials. Uh, yeah, they were moving chunk of paper walk out there, page sixty five, but not what is terrorist that tight regard is still preferable. I think have an issue with that necessarily. And we talked previously about the about running to the edge of the property and Italy due to the three foot path that's up there. They're up against the the neighboring building anyway, the fence and stuff. So we have that deck. Okay, so there's I read the staff report. There's the uh, the staff analysis actually includes first the comments from the commission feedback, correct? Yeah. And then on the second page is the is the actual recommendations. Uh, so the, the what staff is recommending is something to divide that up into a little bit more bays. Again, I'm just absorbing the information. So there's something from the guidelines here. It says additions should be smaller than the historic building to which they are attached. The total size of all of the additions existing in proposed considered as a whole should not exceed the total size of the historic structure. The length and width and height of all additions considered as a whole should be less than that of the historic structure. Is the new building bigger than the historic structure with all that? Have? I've got, if we go to page. Uh... Scroll between the staff guidelines. There was that page 65 has the site notes on it. Yes. States that the see this structure with the current addition there currently they're going to demolish is 821 square feet. Correct. The proposed. So the, the current addition removed brings the destruction down to 564. Proposed addition being 747. So that's really going to be 260 square feet of addition removed and then replaced. Right. So it falls just under. Yeah. Should be shorter. Are we current height? Overall height or we are less on the addition, correct? That's correct. I'm sorry. This should be shorter than the square lower than all the height. I point the middle one. This should be lower than all the height. This should be narrower and shallower, shallower than the historic structure. This exterior wall should step in from the walls of the historic structure. The length of the addition should not exceed the length of the square of the structure. Looks like we're not exceeding around three six. What is the existing structure like? Do we have? Looks like it might be longer. Well, I, I guess it's if we look at the, look up top, I guess, and I don't know that there's a dimension. I so, I, I guess when I'm looking at this, the existing structure as of it as it is today is longer. Gotcha. I see. Yeah, because you're taking the addition off. Because I'm taking that addition off, correct? And its room appears to be the same. On the elevations, it just feels big. <laughs> and if you go to page sixty-seven, look at yeah, that's fair. Look at the rear elevation. Well, if you look at see the difference, just yeah, yeah on the line version, right? It doesn't quite. You know. But this this peak is the same as that peak, <clears throat> right? 
because down below is lower. Yeah, if you look at those two elevations. On the next page. 168. This one. Staff has also included the sections. Yes. The sections about connectors here. Yeah. Yes. When connected to a historic building, connectors should be reversible. So, can be reversible. so we can't. This is. Our good friend Ned, who's sitting in the back of the room, always talks about the walls being removed, but the walls were already removed um, in this condition, particular condition, and I know we debated that. Um, that's an interesting piece. I'm just not sure that connector sections are appropriate for this for you. Trying to wrap my head around. So section of the addition has um, been struck in the, it looks like it's trying to be a connector between the larger massing of the trees. Yeah. 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 Originally, it would engage the primary structure of the roof. Now that in between piece, the IC black roof, they are going to recall it that connected in IC. Do less than the small stuff with this connection, make sure it's short and lowest. He's got connected to a historic building the country should be reversible so we can do it. Man, I gotta go home. Every time I close out, I gotta go home. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll the last page, but. Okay. This is I mean, it's interesting. In elevation, it reads as a connector, but in plan, it doesn't. It reads as just an addition, right? So that's the question. The opening that's in the existing wall. I mean, this could be. It it reads to me like in plan, like an addition, though that's right. not engaging the existing. Right, right, correct. Yeah. And see, where's your head? I haven't seen this in conceptual eyes. I think I'm better on it. Little bit of an objection I had was that one corner now kind of kind of wraps the edge. But I think all else being equal with the lot, how far back it is, I mean, and the other setbacks, the roof changes. My opinion. Yeah, I'm having trouble looking at those, those two side elevations. Remembering that to such detail because they're not visible that way. Because when you look at them, they're just not right. Um, Aaron, where, where's your head? I'm having trouble with that connection. I feel like that south corner of the existing building should be expressed and not covered. I realize that it's problematic in the, in the plan, but I feel like that's not following the guidelines. And I realize it's set back and it's not visible, but it's precedent. Tell them the deciding vote. <laughs> <laughs> song. I better consider it. Can I borrow your guidance? Sorry, it takes so much. Oh. 
No worries. In I this situation, I appreciate with it. These three votes, I want to make sure I get it all. Yeah, there's a door, but nothing stairs the windows. So I guess from an architectural perspective, that corner is, <coughs> if it is a sticking point, is there any ability to add six inches on to get a little bit off the back of the building and then come south? That possibility or potentially like that, or if, if that becomes the the deciding factor. Can we can we go back to the to the look sure. at the plan? Go back to page sixty six. He's looking at that the first floor. It's it's the powder room. It's the yeah. assume the closet of some sort that you walk in to get the powder room. In the kitchen, he's behind it. Looks like the kitchen is trying to line up with the dining area. It's like questions from that. The whole section basically just shift a couple inches enough to get that little corner piece not engage the side of the building, but to come behind it. On the, on the, uh, Can we talk about the maintenance and top pointing that would be required for that nook? Like, I know when we talked about the, the zoning setback, you needed three feet to be able to, you know, if there was a fire and whatnot. But now if we're setting this piece awkwardly, like, don't we run a risk that we destabilize the brick that's there? And how do we maintain it? The brick itself, first floor right now, wraps the corner currently. And then when you get up to the second floor, you have brick that runs in the building. How would we maintain the exterior brick if we cut this little like how are people going to maintain maybe i'm not understanding what you're you asking back, like, two, face. I, I think they're, what they're suggesting is sliding this back this way so that i can come back in and tie in an inch back <clears throat> so with the changes that we've made previously that's one reason we've actually gotten a longer house as we've moved along here but as you can see, that east wall is very tight in that design, and that's just the only way we could fit things in here on the first floor. So I would say if we could do that architecturally, we'd probably be able to need to move the entire addition, additional two inches alongside with it. I don't think that's an issue. Your lock coverage is under the kind of lock coverage. It doesn't treat it really like a connector. Yeah. The, the, the one of the main reasons why it can become problematic for the commission to, to not have that little bit of return is that once it becomes interior space, there's not much we can do about anything you do on the interior. But you can, to so, 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 Foley's point earlier about addition should be able to be removed in the future to bring back to the original state of the building. If the future owner, I'm not saying you're going to do this, but the next owner to come in and just put off that entire corner of brick because it's now into your space. And there's no way to have that footprint of the existing structure maintained. And that's what drives the condition to want to have some kind of separator there. Even if it's a six inch piece of vertical set back from the face of the brick a little bit to, to give it that corner holds the footprint of the building. So you're saying we would go six inches in on the north, provide that corner, and then push out the extension of the three inches. And I know. I'm Can I not approach. Yeah. yeah. I just want to see if I'm going to. Yeah. 
Also, our, our plan was to expose that brick to appreciate it inside the house. Yeah, that 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 I think makes the entire conversation a good point. It would definitely get you the end of the table there. Oh, you can I can that over here. Sure. I'm just trying to make sure it's not going to be a, a potential. Or I'm trying to find you a like, guaranteed. Yes. <laughs> And you do want to show me your slides? Yeah, that's make the other things. Yeah, so they said, you know what, they're just saying, yes, it is. And however much we we just need to get it passed. They're just suggesting that we move this wall back just a little bit this way and just get when they're done with it and just get that little return. So this little corner is exposed. Okay, but I want to make sure that we're getting six inches that way and that way too. Well, yeah, we have the room to. Yeah, what so long we're, we're, yeah. standing there. The entire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the so that it doesn't alter the upstairs, obviously. Right. Right. Just going to see money. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think both things. It just that just gives that ability to get that return in there. All the conversation because it's fun. We're okay with that. that. That's the kind of stuff that comes up during the actual, not just that you see the actual drawing, you see the final product. And that's what you see sometimes. Yeah. Um, as long as we can maintain that book for a little bit. Jacqueline, you know, if we if we vote to approve this, you want to look back and see what we're saying so we can just have that to us. I just make sure you understand what it is when it comes to you. We'll have to officially have that within the application, right? So what we're to do the that's true. Okay. I think we have a conversation about the pervious first information of the patio being at the back of my opinion, and that's just my opinion. There's a lot of impervious surface in the slot, not very long line. Taking away some brick, some deck, which is technically impervious to a certain extent. Um, but to me, the amount going in that's impervious, then of course it's more worse. That's up to the wall. I just agree with that. I think that, um, you know, we're not, we, we don't typically approve any concrete slabs like that. We ask that all new paving be impervious. Now you can have big, you can have big slabs of concrete that's laid on aggregate with, you know, joint spacings in between them. Well, what that, about, sorry, go ahead. You know, that are more like a stepper or something of that sort, but we do not approve the one big, you know, contiguous slab of concrete. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, like what's your thoughts on that? I'm trying to close that up again. Um, I'm there on the addition, by the way, with that, with that change. I like what's in the guidelines. I can't see these not to be. Um, so, Anthony, you're saying that you feel the amount when you remove because there's that current patio that's being removed. 
and now there's just a walk all the way back. You feel like there's less pervious surface overall. I'm not saying there's less pervious impervious. I'm sorry. I'm not saying there's less impervious. Just saying the amount of impervious going in minimal to the overall lot size. It would be, to me, it's a kind of death, but it can drive, and that's kind of how I would play it off. Is it's, it's the application of the not using impervious is that been based on guidelines or standards, or just not practice of the commission? The practice of the commission. Okay. Yes. okay, but then two four two four. <laughs> Any other questions about the application? No, but thank you for bearing with us. Yes. I think that would you like to amend your application? Move the building with six inches. In my opinion, it's what's ever needed to make that work construction wise. It's six, eight, four, ten. I think it's a construability issue, in my opinion. So we're saying yes, we're gonna amend the application. Yes. We're going to amend it and also move the back of the house however much we have to move for the front constructability. Okay, with that, I would like to motion to approve GB2107047 1050 Yeager Street as amended. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Against? Aye. Based on the comments. Let's have a motion to pass. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Short, short hand. <laughs> We'll get to the conceptual. It's just one quick uh, look back for the ones we passed up. Item three, five four eight South Third Street. Item four, one two three East Deschler. Item eight, eight three three City Park. All right. Go ahead into the conceptual applications. Record show. Commission Durs at the back on the table. Uh, item 15, GV-21-07-049, 625 Mohawk Street. Please raise your right hand. Welcome back. We're in touch room, the whole crew's in touch room. I do. William Hugus, architect. Anywhere, I've been living here since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, brewery had our first meeting here last week. Okay. So the June business meeting, the commission noted the 54% of the but that they can discuss at the meeting since this is a conceptual Before we begin to do this, uh, apologize for short staff so you don't have the full voice. The purpose uh, tonight, submittal, uh, the addition is a very simple structure and we're using the kitchen as a connector, visual connector to the original cottage. But I wanted to get a read on the lot coverage issue specifically. I know the, the maximum is 50%. Historically, I think we've gone up to around 53%. I don't know whether that's totally accurate, but um, so once we started exceeding that, I got a little concerned before we submit to BZA for any variances. That's where we are. Uh, the purpose of this addition is to shift the living room to the rear of the property and reuse the front living room and convert to a master bedroom suite. The wife has had some um, mobility issues and this is a long-term kind of solution for them. The, my question would be, I'm looking at the sandboard map. Jacqueline, is this the 51 sandboard map that we're showing? Still didn't think on it. 
The reason I asked it I'm just trying to make sure that, that the addition that we're showing on page one, which is the current author site, showing addition is bigger than that porch that's shown in the same. So, we're, so is that an applicant submitted to you? Mr. Hughes, do you know what the data that was of some of the same format? Well, I have a, a 51 that doesn't doesn't show any where the kitchen currently is, which seems odd to me, frankly. Not that they're always 100% correct. I'm just trying to establish that. What is there as opposed to something not the original edition? It's been, and if it is, it's been severely altered. It's now one large room. Traditionally, these were uh, rooms with a side cold room and a side porch, and none of that is there. So if you look at the 1891 map, Six twenty-five. It shows what I thought would be there, but do you have that one by the way? Eighteen on the one. So I was just looking at. I'm not sure what the data points. Does that match one of the ones that you're looking at? And the nineteen twenty-five doesn't show it either. Or 1921 doesn't show it, which confuses me. I suspect the Sanborn was wrong. I know it's hard to believe, but um, just the roof line of the kitchen to me looks fairly old, but the siding, they've enclosed the porch, they've changed all the windows on it. Um, these me believe it's it's old, but it's not necessarily original. I'm sorry. When you add the addition, what's the lock up going to be? It's going to be fifty three point. Uh, no, we had I had. I adjusted uh, to get the numbers down below 54%. You're looking, the addition would no, no longer be no longer than 18 feet to get to that 53.4%. Yeah. yeah, and I didn't want to go beyond the neighbor to the north's backside. I was trying to line up with that. Side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the house to the south has a big pergola, very long. It doesn't show up here, but. This is conceptual. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> to get that short. When okay. Mr. Panzer was here, he would always knock me on my using my OGs on the flat side. <laughs> Just pointing out that the yeah the downshare thing. Yeah, I mean it's it's a little that, that elevation is a little different. From from a back their personal backyard view, I would agree, but uh, I think it's a lot quieter. Yeah, it is. It, the, the garage takes up the whole width of the lot virtually. Yeah, it's a, it looks like a 1940s garage. Yeah, that's going to stay. Yes, they did ask about building a carriage house back there, and I, I cut the meeting short. <laughs> We're losing too many of those, by the way. Those texture block garages. So I just wanted to get a read on the lot coverage and then um, 
we're reopening a side door that's there and building a stoop and that will be the new front door to the south side. Yeah, and it's just a fixed door in the front. And just fix the current door in the front. Yeah. Leaving the stairs. Leaving the stairs and the railing we could consider removing. It's not original. Uh, it doesn't touch the Ohio limestone, thank God. Slide. Uh, we'll be removing the iron gate to the south side and shifting it back to the past the front door, the new front door. Hang in on the lock covers for everybody since that's what they're really going to play. What, what, how far have we gone before you? We we could probably squeeze it the addition down to sixteen eight if you really want to crunch numbers, but I'm it's not going to get us to the fifty percent. It's, it's that simple. Um, I think the only spot coverage for any sentence or real addition I'm expecting would be to go up on the current addition, but then you're going to run into all kinds of root problems with the small cottage. Yeah, I think the, the that's small fair. cottage is really what's the the mitigating factor to me because this small lot too. I think we've yeah, I think we've had let's say we've allowed it in the past to go a little to creep above that fifty percent on things that providing sink and grace, if you will, um, not trying to have the Megalithic additions to small cottages to use the field cottage. Now, somebody could come back and propose a best story addition that needs some time. Don't even mention that. And we're just need to be able to that one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and there's already this giant. And then Long the other question would be a matter of procedure. Are we currently requiring? Um, letters sent out to, at this level for variance. I noticed you just voted on one you didn't seem to get letters. None of the other commissions require it, just to point that out. But not that that's not, a, I think it's an important thing to German village for neighborhood. I didn't use that. Well, I'm trying to. I don't have a problem sending them out personally, um, but I didn't want to get involved in the process about with missing that point. So, so submit, submitting for the variances. Yeah, we want to submit for the variances next, and we'd certainly be back for another review of this, of course. Um, just so you know, building department, we have been uh, reviewed with. Uh, Christine lead. And once you trigger 1 variance, they try to mop up with all the other ones that. None of these buildings conform with, so the list might get. A little long, but it's all about side yards and crap like that. So, so I will just know. The addition is not considered. We don't think it's considered contributing. Is that correct? Current addition. It'd be a little more due diligence with Sanborn's department. And I don't think it is based upon the Sanborn provided. Yeah, right. based on the Sanborn's, I, I'm not sure it is technically, but it is older. I just know that the details are really similar to those. That's the one that I was on with my initial question. Oh. <laughs> it's very good. It, 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 we just had them yeah. push back a couple of yeah. applications. So. Then on, on the other side, it would be continuing that wall in line with that facade. If if we if it's turned out this is a historic addition, we want to take the whole thing and just nudge it down and give that facade deviation mm -hmm. and that give the return on the other side to make it pretty good. Not contributing. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you generally could accept 
whatever, 4%? This, this property, this situation. Okay, all right. I, that was the biggest issue at this. I would warn you that there may be more commissioners than commissioners next time. Yeah. No. <laughs> that weren't represented. <laughs> so. Well, Mr. Thiel's back on the commission by the time this, he, he lived right across the street, so he yeah. still has to recuse himself. Yes, that's true. So there might be one more. So is Mr. Fairgill still on? Yeah. Commission? Well, so we're waiting to see who's on the council. Yeah, Brewery, we're down to four. We're waiting on three. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, yeah. He's also. He's my neighbor. We've been trying to get him someone to buy his house. So. He's on renewal as well. He wants to serve. Okay. He hasn't done it either, so we're done. That's enough information on that one. We're on to the next one. Stay put there, Mr. Yugas. Uh, item number 16, GB 21 07 050 862 Mohawk Street. Let the record show Mr. Yugas is still on the record. This is another conceptual application proposing demolition and new construction. The applicant would like to remove existing non-contributing garage to construct a new carriage house and use use barriers and side yard barriers as are inspected, uh, noting party shakes and some brick are the materials supposed to be used. At the June business meeting, the commission noted the application may run into lot coverage variances as well since the application involves a carriage house. Correct. And we also have a preliminary review from Ms. Leeds on uh, the variances. But it would be a city council variance for a use variance because no. carriage house. So in terms of the placement, uh, if you look at the, um, there's my site plan. Um, I'm trying to line up generally with the flanking houses. One is historic to the south. So it's a story and a half cottage or one and three quarters cottage. And then the one to the north is a newer build back in the 80s, I believe. I'm going to pop that. Uh, what's it, the other 1844 Allen? That bunch of applicants come in, complain that they can't turn their cars into a eight by seven door on a. Where do you get the eighteen four alley? Uh, page six of nine, A one. Showing eighteen foot four plus or minus. That's two that's feet. to the alley. Okay. And the alley is twenty feet. You okay. kind of scared me there, <laughs> Mister Harkey. You're scaring me. Um. Yeah, this alley's fairly nicely generous. It's all brick. Um, up and down the alley, there are houses and uh, garages and carriage houses. So we have a pretty good turning radius. In that case. The owners have lived here. It's Michael Cornelius and his wife, Susan Riley. They want a workout facility and guest area for their own purposes. If you look on the floor plan, you can see. Work out there and then they can pull down the <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think. I was trying to uh, reduce the scale along Macon by proposing uh, like a a brick wall uh, that would hide a balcony and then put the two story behind that. The main house is a combination of brick. It probably was a, a cottage at one time that got expanded vertically and it's got shakes on it. And I was proposing a, a shake material for the main carriage house. 
Um, oh, I didn't do a side elevation. It would literally be a, like a screen wall. Let me see if I can. I can kind of see what you're proposing. Right there. So, this is a previous. That's so, painted, but I was proposing a natural brick on this case. Yeah, I do an alley. Uh, Full alley scape on both sides. The house to the north is fairly tall. I'm still trying to keep the peak not to exceed the southern neighbor out of respect for that. They have no windows on their side, so that's good. Um, Backside, they want some kind of balcony space. I didn't spend a lot of time on fenestration on this thing. Uh, we want to apply to the city council and have to get that started. So the purpose is to get a feel for um, the footprint and scale of this thing so we can define variances. You were doing the same kind of double garage first floor, setback second floor uh, over on Beck down the street from uh, Lindy's around that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's one more I saw in the alley. It's over by in Grand Jackson area, that area. That alley could be something smaller. Excellent. I would just recommend if you get a chance to pop around, take a look at those styles, see. We have some examples of what they are. Mm -hmm. the context is something that is architectural. Yeah, language you want to maintain the village. It's going to be growing. If, if you like it, maybe that's a solution to some of the carriage houses that will become more popular. Yeah. If you don't think it's appropriate, or whatever, if you have a good test case to look at. I had proposed a flat roof, more contemporary solution, but the clients really wanted to stick a little more traditional. Their roof line is gable roof on the main house. Um, so we wanted to pick that up and then pick up their materials. It looks like when it's like the roof, it's like a portrait. It's a building, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the only question is, did you calculate lot coverage? I have not, no. Now, in a strict sense, the way we had been doing it, this wouldn't exceed the 50%, but you still have a use variance. So they get into a, at zoning, they get into a question of how you define that. Evidently, there's a provision in the zoning code that hasn't been used for many years to my knowledge and it has to do with the width of the lot and the depth of the lot and you're only allowed to use so much of that depth for your calculations so the numbers may look strange higher do you understand so these bowling alley lots can only use a certain amount of depth depending on their width in the in the numbers coverage calculations okay and that's fairly new development we hadn't we hadn't been enforcing it evidently for years but new staff new uh outlooks and with the with the narrowness of the lot basically it becomes an issue yeah 
chatting to you afterwards. And, and we will be reviewing with both neighbors flanking the carriage house plans before we come back. Any other comments? So the general direction massing is looking decent. Okay. Things kept pretty simple. What I'm seeing. I'm I'm blind. I can't see anything. <laughs> that's the front. That's the main house. It's the house with us. Yeah. And that's the one I think was a. St one story cottage that got expanded vertically. There's a few examples in the village of that. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Seventeen GB there's two one dash zero seven dash zero five one three 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 East Tech Street. Please raise your right hand. Right tell the truth, the whole truth of the treat. Name for the record. Michael Orant. Sir, Jacqueline. Sexual application of exterior alterations and reconstruction. Uh, the proposed work is to connect a nineteen seventies office edition of that another 1970s edition located at the main house. Uh, they would move the existing door open to the structures are connected. So the application was previously reviewed as a conceptual in 2016, and the applicant notes the commission at that time was favorable towards the concept, as this would be a modification of the non of non historic conditions. It would not be modifying the original structure of the house. Um, yeah, so I guess this is more about conceptual reviews. So I don't have finalized drawings from my architects. So I just kind of want to get your input or feedback on what guidance to give them. Was there not a business meeting in June? It was. Oh. Okay, I reached out about it, but I didn't get a response. I was hoping to get this done then so I could have the actual drawings for you today. Um, do you have the pictures, like some of the historic pictures on file? They were given to me. I can't remember if it was. It might have been 2017 when I did the kind of real basic overview conceptual review. Okay, they might have emailed them to me, but I couldn't find them. Um, the gist of it is this structure you're looking at, and then that kind of pocket or cubby hole. Neither of those are part of the original structure, so I think they were both done either 1975 or 1976, um, going from memory. So I want to connect those two. So if you go back to the kind of floor plan. So if you see where it says, you know, half bath and then that area that's open, connect those where you see that door would be moved to the outside so the structure would become an L shape instead of having that pocket. And then just have the roof that's on the the office currently just go into the, the main roof, which is technically an, it's an addition that was extended off the the main roof of the cottage in the 70s. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure of the terminology, but if this is the, the main roof, you know, it would run in like that. Is yeah. it actually slate roof up there? Or is it slate? They're they're both slate, but they're different types of slate. I think the uh the so this slate that you're looking at here, I don't know that uh the type it is, but then the other one is I think called the ribbon slate that has that kind of uh, mineral deposit which causes them to deteriorate. So the slate on the office is actually of the better quality. So and I'd be open if you want me to use one of the other of the two when I connect them or if you don't want slate or what I mean I just want to do it as cleanly and simply as possible. Do the owner when this came to us about this all connected the same before mm -hmm. I bought it in August of 2016, and I can't remember if I made that fall. I think it might have been the spring of 2017. I, I remember the, con the conversation about this property. I wasn't sure if it was you or the previous owner. Um, <laughs> he rented it for years, so I doubt it would have been him. So 
I rented it and then bought it from my landlord. So, so I lived here longer than since I found it. I think what will come up to play for the pool commission is the one how to tie into an existing or original historic slate roof. That's always kind of been a no-no. Um, we don't like to cut into existing historic slates. Um, but it's technically not in it. Uh, historic because that even the part of the main structure of the house that was extended out. So where that chimney is, that's the that's where the original structure stopped. Do you know when that's extended out? Six seventy six. So that not this little not the small box in the right, but the piece that extends out was seventy six. Everything from that chimney, which is in line with this part, that edge is all an oh. addition. So that's why I'm saying it's an addition to an addition. Gotcha. And, and they did it the way we wouldn't do it today. Yeah, yeah I, I, they obviously wouldn't get approved today. This is a, a modern brick with modern mortar, different from the you know the softer brick and the softer mortar yeah. around the original house. So, and I wouldn't be doing any brick. I would want you know mostly windows in that connection. And then either a door would be on the same uh, face where that uh, uh, their office is. To open onto that patio area, or I could eliminate the door altogether, whichever you want. Right now, the, the house has four doors, which is kind of a lot for the you know amount of square footage. Did we find the office substantially lower than the um, I don't have the exact measure. No, it's lower. Um, there might be some other pictures you can see it better. So if you go to that middle picture, that might be a better. So it's prop. Yeah, um, still can't really tell from there. I'd say maybe 18 inches if you go from the very bottom to it. So, so I'll have my group for giving me the schematics on that, but the two box cutters will connect, however, just the best way to do that. Right now, it's, um, it's not ideal because that area, so that ladder is there for reference of where the door would be. Um, it collects water there's um some of that uh, whatever that it's a composite particle type wood that they used on the siding a lot of that's you know has rot damage from collecting water and leaves over the years so well you can see on this picture how your, your roof just slopes right into there and just, just dump we're gonna have just to dump back in there right oh yeah yeah so i've i for the life of me i can't understand why they would go through the expense and time to do yeah. that addition and then just not connect it the way i'm asking to connect it now <laughs> it seems like it would have been much simpler and added you know a decent amount of square footage and open up the the floor pan quite a bit well it looks like the finished floors are different as well i mean the whole thing's set lower right so the floor interior wise it's all level so that office is level with the entire house, yes. So yes, and that would maintain the same. But it looks like yeah, it looks like if you see so that door that door um that's level with the so the, the main level of house is all right. This is an existing trap door in there? Uh non functional, but yeah. So that's probably the the old the basement entrance, the old basement entrance. Yeah, there, I think there might have been a coal shoot somewhere else too, but um, yeah, so that would actually become right now that's non, it's not being used. That would become interior space, yeah. but I would actually have a trap door out of the floor, which would become my entrance to the basement right now. So it would actually be using the original layout of the basement where it's not currently. Yeah, it's <laughs> my biggest frustration in the house and what I've always wanted to change since I bought it, but you know, it's just time and money getting more. But you have to drain it. So yeah, well, I mean, it like, could, it could just want to, yeah, cut flat across. But I don't know if I would. It would be such an awkward connection yeah. between the two. That's why I think It'd just worse than it. Yeah. And, and I'm open to if you want me to run the exact same roof line off the office into it, or if you want me to have it step down a little bit to where it's like under where the current, you know, soffit fascia is. So it's clear to, you know, the lineage between. You know, yeah, when the addition was the addition, yes. But given discussion, I guess when you put in a new wall in the back of the historic structure, could you be able to recess a little bit so the corner of the historic center? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. I'm I would like to just have uh windows off 
where that historic structure is. But yeah, I can clearly show that it wasn't, you know, it's different from the original. Yeah, I guess in the office it could probably be flush and it's not a structure. Mm -hmm. But the end of that wall on the left, that is a historic building. Yes. So yeah, if you want me to put it in a couple inches or something. Yeah, totally. So this wall is wood framed on the inside. Mm -hmm. And this is all wood framed. Yeah. Operating correctly, right? Operate correct either, right? Just, um yes, but it actually but it was modified at some point. So But yeah, you can't, it's not huge, you can't see it from the street, it's kind of, you know, wasted. I mean, there's lots of details to work through, but I, I, filling this in doesn't bother me. Okay. I, to me, it just makes so much more sense than what's there currently. And I, again, I obviously wasn't around when they did it, wasn't even alive, but um, I can't understand why they went through what they did to do that. The only thing that gives me any pause is and then when I go back and see the same board maps. Um, so the structure to the, to the right, you see it's, it's a block foundation, definitely more modern. To the left, the piece that was in the 70s extruded out, it's got a rubble foundation. So probably a porch or something. Which it might as well, might, could, could and you can be. see there's a clear line where they extended it at some point. Yeah. So because at one point there was nothing beyond that wall. Like, I think, you know, so you think that rubble stone extended was. It looks different than the, it looks different than if from the stuff from it on the left. You can kind of see the rubble. Yeah. yeah the vertical differentiation. I mean, yeah. we really were trying to make it look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but more maybe that was a historic fort addition and then they moved to close at some point. I mean, at one point there was literally Nothing. no structure there, then another time in the there was like something that was one story and then in the 70s they phrased it made it two stories and connected them so there's been lots of modifications done to that okay so key points i should ask my architect to address when i have the final drawings are you okay with me doing slate to slate how do you it would be it would be great to figure out a way he could he or she could to, to, to make it clear that this is new, mm -hmm. right? What you're doing. And I don't know how you do that with the roof, but at least like with the materials that are used or something. But yeah. The roof is such a challenge because of low levels of this. Um, but if there's some creative solution to, to that roofing. Scenario I'll ask for two options. Um, I can either continue the existing style slate that's on the office, which is different, and you can tell there's a difference when you have them side by side. Um, or I could even have the roof go from where underneath that soffit piece, so it's you know drop down four okay. inches. That way you can see if there's a change between the roof lines between the office and the main. Not interesting. Is it, is it, do you have it? Could be a black like that just came here. That is, and we've got the challenge of that whole thing. It's, it's I thought it down way well to do that. Right? I thought it was so weird. Yeah, if it was simpler, it would work. I would be totally open to that. But there's so many, there's, there's so, so many different angles and things. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I could grab the roof from here, just the additional miles start there. So, it's complicated. I don't know the mission. Okay. Yeah. 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 Look forward to seeing what's come up. Oh, it's. <laughs> well, and I have an estimate for all the work from Superior Home Maintenance. They'd be doing the majority of the work. And, um, Steve, who does all my state work and work for my neighbors, he would do the roof portion. So, yeah, I feel like I feel like I don't know. You guys can look like I feel like this extending slave sense. I hate saying that. I, it's such a weird thing to say, but so I, I pulled up the sand more. From 1922, and there is an addition with the pocket porch right there. It may not be existing; it may have been totally taken off, renovated instead of 76. I can promise you, there's nothing from that time period on the house at all. So, for me, seeing this and just seeing what's on the screen, I would need to see more photos or stop by the site visit. Just my, my personal ability to go see what's there, mm -hmm. uh, just because having 
having stay on the roof, having the foundation shown, having the same water show a footprint of something there with a little pocket porch where that is currently. There's a lot of evidence that something could be historic. I need to make sure that what is there is no longer there. That, that's all. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying yeah. I need to make sure. That makes my one that is that way. Yeah. It may. Well, it except that it was one a, story. Like, 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 like center block roof full of, uh, Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 That way it's not impact. Yes, yeah, one and a half back was one story. So, but all the bricks along. So these are all, except on this side they did it back to when you look at the picture here. That's the thing. That roof extends on the other side. All these bricks. Yeah. I mean, so they're the same style brick as this. Yeah. And it's all that stuff. So, I, I just think it's worth a site visit if we can, or a lot of photo documentation to kind of clear it out. I know with. We get that is back on the table. <laughs> you definitely got to dig into it. He's yeah. much harder than I am about that. Or so. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that sure that we have all the documentation in place in the file so we can do it within conscious sense. Do you have those pictures? I can. So, yeah, so we'll have to check the hard uh, our hard copy files, but if you've seen them before, then uh, I know they're in the hard copies, and I have, I think, very much so. I'll send this to Jack. Jack, if you go to the, the, the thing. There two to fifty one sandboards there. It just shows up on there. Yeah. They can show at one point between my house and my neighbor's house to the uh, south. There was a garage that was my property. These would be all one big property that yeah. got divided somewhere along the miles. Where, where your drive is now on the other side, that's where you had a garage and a little one story wood frame machine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I said, I'm not saying it's not, it's not not original. This thing could be. He's got to make sure we have the information. Hmm. But if we can prove that it's not original, I would say. Taking slate to slate wouldn't be an issue at that point in time. Okay. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, there are pictures that show that area that would be connected. That second story part of the roof was connected. If you get, get, that, get those photos into the application, let's get the sandwich. Site visit in there just so we can again, top the eyes and check the crust tees. Right. Um, and then the other one that we're Okay, so just continuation on this, I'll submit for them. Do I have to wait to the next official meeting or if I get it by the business meeting date, the drawings, can I do it then? Uh, that's off the staff when stuff is all due. Okay. So for, yeah, the next application, um, since you're a conceptual, we do have like a one week grace period. You just make sure to submit like the new application form showing whatever, whether it's conceptual or not, or any updated information and other okay. materials. Okay. Um, and then there was, I had a light exterior light application from May, and then it was a continuation for June. But do we have a June meeting? Because I inquired about it, but I didn't get a meeting invite. Or... Yeah, I remember the light. Yeah. It, was, it was just the continuation. Yeah, so I don't know if you saw any uh, updated materials or anything, but certainly. Um, I just emailed you some additional photos. I think the the issue from the last meeting is that um, I believe it's the guy that's not here. Thought it was my front door, and I've submitted some additional photos that clearly show it's not my front door. So, is there some, can, can we read that now since nobody else is here? I don't think we can take action on that without having it officially on the agenda. Okay. Um, like a public notice process. So, just for my Understanding. So I had the we had the meeting in May. Then it was motion to continue, but I didn't know there was any additional amendments I had to make for continuation. So any, I don't remember what the it was continued on, but any additional information or anything pertaining to that application, we just submitted to staff, and then we could okay. add it on as a continued application. Okay. So I just resubmit that for the next one. Yeah, so then for a continued application, you don't have to do a whole new form if it was continued. You just submit any updated information. Okay. Is that as far as 
getting up the site to, to look and trying to make sure that it is expedited. Do we even have staff there as well, or can we just stop by and take a look at the applicants? Uh, let me double check on that just because I haven't had a site visit that we well, I guess it's actually we should have given us some fun. Just walk your dog away. Oh, <laughs> I know you guys are all my neighbors. You can come out at night if you want. So. Um, yeah, let me just confirm. What's that? Oh, you did? <laughs> you not go to the gym anymore? Sure. Uh, I got well, let Jacqueline talk with, with uh, city staff to verify what steps you got to take, and she needs to contact you and I can swing by, I'll walk by and take a look. Okay. If it needs to be something official, we got to stand there and deal with that. Okay. I just want to make sure we're getting you the information you need to talk about. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you'll have a much better feel for when you see it in person. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Other than that, it was just the lights that I just wanted to see if I could get those approved. But... Thanks for waiting so late. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> Question is we're just the line for German Village. And so there's, I have another example of a picture of a house that has the same style light on their front door. It's at like 208 Kossif or Kossif, how you say it's like the, and uh, Jaeger. So it's like just north of where John Eagle used to be off Jaeger. That would be Schumacher. Is that Schumacher? Uh, Kossif, north of Jaeger. Well, well it's north on north. Jaeger, but it's, the, so if you're going north, south on well, Jaeger, the east side of the street. Well, I think it's Kossif. the northeast corner. I think it would be in German Village. I think it would be. because it comes down. German Village goes along Giant Eagle and then jogs across Kossuth, Kossuth and then goes up. So it's, up yeah. the it's on the up south branch. So the west side of where that Giant Eagle lot is. It's, it's, uh, oh, so it's definitely. Okay. It's on Jaeger on the west side. Yeah. So it was just another example of. And that one was on a front door where because see that is my own yard. I don't have I'm like 20 inches apart from my neighbor. So I don't have a lot. Yeah. And last time it was too, I guess it wasn't decorative enough for a front door. And I'm like, this is as much my back door as because you have to go through a gate into my yard, you know. So but anyway, I'll submit those pictures of my front door on back and that. And then yeah, the style of light I chose was literally the exact light on my neighbor's house and that's why i picked it because i didn't think it would be an issue so, okay um just let me know when you want to stop by okay you can just she has my number i think you can just text me right there so is that it we got it thank you very much uh back to the agenda there's all business. Let's go back and deal with the applications we passed by and we'll build business. Uh, so, agenda item GB2107038548 South 3rd. This is removing the existing land. Uh, somebody can take action on about the applicant here. So it's very similar to what we just approved, doesn't it? So the example was, or the similar approvals that we had for the were included towards the end of the application materials, just for comparison. Okay. One has to certificate the property to stand on. Yes. And then we approve the one with the swoop or the one with the flat, or those are two different? There were two different um, one fixtures that had been approved at that prior meeting, and those are both included. Got it. Thank you. It's pretty darts. We yeah. talked about a little bit of the business meeting. Didn't we? Any, anybody have any qualms with, with uh, taking action on this item? Got to look at everything. All right, we'll call it the table then. Motion to approve GV2107038548 South 3rd Street as submitted. Second. Questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. Against? 
Item 4, GB21-0703912, East Deschler. This is uh, porch fixtures that are hanging. This one, Jeff, I don't know if I remember correctly, we need some feedback from, from the applicant about types of information. Yes, uh, and I think the main poll that I have here. Yeah. Okay, so at the June business meeting, then the commission asked for clarification on uh, proposed locations for the two light fixtures and whether only one light fixture is proposed for installation and what that installation method would be and whether the second light fixture would have to be a okay glass. Um, noting that the glass in the image appears okay. So the applicant has clarified that they will be replacing the existing light fixture only, so just one. Uh, and they have provided those two options due to limited supplies for home improvement items at this time <laughs> and the speed at which items are going up stock. Uh, they did clarify that the second light fixture option does have a frosted, is described as frosted glass, so they believe it would be opaque rather than clear. Second was a lot more big, a lot, bigger. A lot, a lot more bigger. bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time. It's a lot bigger than the first one, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically almost twice the length. And I think the existing fixture, I mean, not that the existing fixture looks historic and actually looks like it was probably. I, I, I have a little bit of problem of picking one of two options for application without the applicant here. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I'll yeah. just keep it on the to clarify the application as well. So we needed to take a motion to table it. So it might help them with getting more product to stock. Okay. <laughs> motion to table GB21073. Thanks. Question for a motion. Favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. I have it. Item 7, 801 City Park, GB2107041. In fact, it's when you said that, it said we could go ahead with it, they were here. Yes. Um, and I, I explained to them that it, it could be voted on if the commission did not have any questions or they thought it could be approved, but that it, uh, the commission had questions or they thought it might be denied, that they will probably, the action will probably be approved. So, you know, we're okay with that. This is wanting to have a dimensional shingle. If we determine this is not on the improved shingles list, like the, the shingle shingle type was not, or the color was not, or both. I believe the shingle type is not uh, as well, of course, with the color going along with that. Uh, so the applicant is wanting to use that particular. So they were previously approved to use the shingle from the approved list. But they're interested in this alternate chain goal based on their contractor recommendation. The contractor told them that the true definition duration chain goal that they would like to use is superior to three dash angles of durability. So that's why they're asking if that could be considered. Is this because um, what's the slope of is this only going on the addition back? Right. So is that a uh, single story addition at the rear? The addition is not historic. But what's the slope of that wheel? That I know if it's shallow. Shingles. Shingles. So I wonder if the duration, because it has a 130 mile wind resistance, will well, last longer on shallow sleep. That is impeccable. I, I'll, I'll put this out there that typically we, we would need to see it as a sample. While a lot of the. the yeah, so that, that was the applicant who did have the sample at the German Village Meeting House. That could send it there. So it sent to me and you. I don't think it got forward on the list. Did you guys hear about sample I remember seeing that. I do. Okay. I know. Yeah. 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 It was included like a couple of updates in one email. And for last week, it's the one that we get a chance to get there. Follow it. My roofer told me once that a dimensional shingle looks funny on a really shallow roof. I, I would not be able to. If nobody here has seen the sample. Yeah, we would table it. I would say we table it. Motion to table GV21070418018 City Park Act. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 Jack, I'm, if need be, I can send it from the meeting house and bring it here for the next meeting. Sure. And I'm recording this meeting even. It's right in the gift post. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the last of the ones we passed over was item eight, 
GB-21-07-042 83 City Park. Slate for removing slate. Placing the slate line. Yes, this applicant has updated a couple of things that were a uh, point of question uh, at the business meeting. So they have revised the gutters, which were previously proposed to replace the half rounds with OG case style, and they're now going to replace with the half round gutters. And there's a couple of other things here. Oh, yes. So they are proposing the half round gutters and downspouts to have better galvanized steel. And that is a change from the previously proposed black five inch case style gutters. We're trying to cut the cost of building. That's good. The gutters currently match. The trim and the downspout matches that purging of the portion of the building. Historically, it would have been galvanized. Okay. I see nice ones in the village. Yeah. And that were approved within the last, I would say, five or seven years. Paint, paint you, you can paint galvanized. You need to either let it weather to paint it, or you need to use a patch in. Like, um, so it'll like match and clear. If you don't paint it properly, it'll just paint. You could also factor the finish. Okay, paint steel. Yeah. You can factory finish government. They're originally they had proposed replacing their half rounds. They had currently with K style. Now they're going half rounds back to half rounds. Just galvanized. That's correct. Yes. That was uh, they changed back to new half rounds is based on the commission and staff feedback. Yeah, interesting. I don't know. I just don't remember proving galvanized. The house costs mine, and I know that renovation is going to cost. I haven't made a memory of something proving galvanized. No. Yeah. 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 It's not a no, that's not Chinese. Sounds like it's not Chinese gray. Yeah, it yeah. kind of weather is a little. Bit different. Any, I mean, is there any heartache over proven galvanized head for not like anything else here? What do they do with the downspouts? Uh, so the downspouts they are replacing with new round downspouts, and again, those would be galvanized. Gal 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 yeah, that's how I say it. Um, typically, like when we staff approve applications for let's say new gutters or downspouts, have them painted or you know finished to match the uh, trim or the adjacent material to have better visually blend in. Must have covered. Trying to see if the guidelines say anything about the period. Uh, paint gutters and downspouts to match your trim colors and color compatible with the existing trim. Go, yep, there's the recommendations. Okay. Okay. Pretty clear. <laughs> so I, I don't think we can vote on based on that. I think we can vote on this application. Yep. Gosh, we said yes on that last full point. I don't think we can break their application form without them being here to request a change. Yep. I don't think we need to continue. Yep. Motion to table GV21070428338 City Park Act. Question of motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Seven. Jack, I just let them know that if they choose to paint it for the guidelines, we could just set them up for the Yeah, uh, maybe possibly we'll get to the second to let the city. 
All right, uh, on to old business. Uh, GB 2105-040-780 South Zell Street. So, Commissioner Panzer, Commissioner uh, Beal and I went out and did a staff or site visit. Did anybody else make it out there? Just us. It was just us two. Okay. Uh, so, we talked about what could be done. They had proposed basically disassembling it piece by piece and laying everything and putting it back up. Replacing all the structure, there was a fire in one third of the building at some point every time, and they had to put it over it and painted it. Um, so, kind of, Ned and I are both in the same opinion of taking the structure down and essentially that they're demolishing, trying to put it back. Just gonna, it would be against the ethos of preservation. Um, so, keeping it in sight, if you have to take a piece off here and there to replace it or be able to fix it. Okay. Um, so the idea that came up was to, to create a whole new support structure within the footprint of the building inside. Um, so basically taking load off the structure. Um, it's happening you see in all those pictures. The whole place was just pulled apart and cobbled together interior wise. Um, nothing interior is really historic anymore aside from the outer shell. Um, so they were going to go take a look at that method. Um, one th one question came after and then it left is what if they did true it up kind of leans here and there and my response to that was that's part of the language of the building if you want to true it up and go to the others to do it so be it but if you build a structure you're able to, to structure support it so it's not going to further deteriorate if you want to leave that lean and everything in there then we're not going to send you have to go back and fix it I would agree. So that was kind of where we left the conversation. Um, talked about footings, foundations along the perimeter. Anything to do is going to be covered up because of how the renovation needs to happen. The amount of work coming on in the city will require thermal in the local community every week. So you're not going to see any of the beams and whatnot that's going to be supportive of structure. It's going to be basically walled in to yeah. have the building. So that's the, what came out of that meeting. Nothing really to take action on. So when we start carrying specs all over and cover. Something that may be historic in there was uh, they were supposed to make sure of their original or if they were like repurposed from somewhere else. That's the old uh, Greek mythology or in Athens. There was a boat that they say and over time they replaced it part by part. The philosophy was is it still the same boat? <laughs> 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 that whole conversation came up. Yeah. So, questions on site visit? I did get a call, Jacqueline, from a concerned neighbor. I guess their gate at that property was broken, open, swinging, banging. And we're like, so we right in there trying to every time we're still back to the So, um, I, I gave them the, the architect's design teams. Office number call. Right. I said if, if you don't get all of that, you know, it's called city or call on this police on the city. All right. I think that's everything we got. Can I check on? No, I, mean, I just left to come up your pants around as new business, but it seems to be a, a fluctuating thing. She's be texting him, I text him back, yeah. asking if he's officially off or what now. And I said, well, right now you're not reappointed. Re and you can't have a person, so yeah. it's just kind of nothing right now. So you can either get a reappointment, or if it's you need a person sometime, or off a remote. Same. So. Mr. Slab, the town company. Now, currently, there was some legislation potentially about that. Yeah, I think currently for you know, staff or anyone else to be able to. Oh, yeah, you know, meetings has to be public meetings in person. In public. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Uh, that's that's their motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Against. Seven. Motion passes. Aye.